Hello, you're listening to the Punk Rock Demonstration. I'm Jack, and we're out here in Los Angeles, or Highland Park, whichever one it is. But uh, this is the band The Dogmatics here. My website is punkrockdemo.com. We're here every Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific time. We're at this LA Punk Film Festival, the seventh annual one. And uh, I'm Jack. What's your name, and what do you do in The Dogmatics? My name is uh, Jerry Lehane. Um, I'm a guitar player and singer. Jim William Halloran, I'm the bass player. We've got someone behind over here. Hi, I'm Tom. I play drums. Hi, I'm, I'm Jay Young, and I uh, do backup sing and mandolin. My name's Peter O'Halloran, and I'm a guitar player. You really are? <laughs> and then we've got uh, someone that's not really in the band, but made a documentary of the band. What documentary did you make, and what's your name? My name's Rudy Childs. I did the uh, document. It's a dogumentary about the dogmatics. And I've been uh, <clears throat> excuse me, friends with these guys for a long time, so just uh, over the past couple of years, we put out a documentary about the life and times of those crazy boys. Very cool. When did you start doing this documentary? Uh, when Jerry announced that they were going to go in the studio and record some new material after 33 years. So that was 2019. Right before that pandemic started, how did that go with uh, the pandemic? Did you guys continue playing, or did you have to settle down? Like, what happened? We did play a couple of times on uh, Jay Young's porch, <laughs> and uh, we streamed it. So it was you know, so we kept in practice playing and playing well in instead of playing out. So Jerry had a big party in his yard. Yeah. yeah. Right. Jerry? Yeah, so um, we have friends that do this thing called the Mess Around at the Plow and Star in Cambridge, and they do it on Sundays, and it's like um, putting musicians in kind of uncomfortable uh, situations, meaning like, you know, playing acoustic, stuff they don't usually play. And because of the, 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 the pandemic, um, we could actually do something outside, so we did it our, at, at uh, my place, where I live in Canton, and... Um, during the time when it was set up, the governor of Massachusetts uh, lifted uh, the ban on how many people could be in a party. So we invited people. And we had like a hundred people show up, and uh, and we played and we streamed it live, and it was it was it was cool. And uh, that was kind of maybe <laughs> maybe. Besides, during COVID, a shit ton of people dying unnecessarily. Well, we carried on as usual, I guess. You could yeah. Say. <laughs> Yeah, and I did a lot of editing at that point, uh, working on the documentary. And so our very first film festival, we won a uh, award for best editing. Because <laughs> what else could you do? You're you couldn't. Time. You couldn't interview anyone. So yeah. So does that mean that we're gonna have really high quality films now that the pandemic is over? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so back to uh, the dogmatics. Where are you guys from? Uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Basically, pretty much all Boston in you know environs like. Yeah. You know, within a 10 mile radius, 20 mile there, radius. There was a time that the band all lived together in Boston. Yeah. And that uh, in the uh, video, it chronicles that that story. Uh, but at, at, now they all they all live in different places around the area. Yeah. We've got another member that just joined. You're, what's your name? Hi, I'm Johnny O'Halloran. Yeah. What do you do? I play the guitar. You think you do. And do some singing sometimes. <laughs> but I'm a very infrequent member of this group because I live in Tucson, Arizona. And the rest of these guys live in Boston, Massachusetts. So when I'm around, I play with them. They let me do it. So that's good. And he's around now. So yeah. it's good to see you. Yeah. Yep, good to see yeah. you. I noticed uh, in uh, your band members' last names, there's a couple last names that are the same last names. Is this a family thing? We grew up in uh, Boston in a part of Boston called Dorchester. And it's traditionally kind of like this Irish American enclave, and we're Irish American dudes. And uh, so there's my brother Jimmy, my younger brother Johnny, and I'm Pete. And uh, we had my twin brother, whose name was Paul, and he was the original member and the bass player. Unfortunately, he was killed in a motorcycle accident in uh, 1986. So here we are. We just keep carrying on and. Uh, Wait, where was I going with this? Okay. Oh, we're, we're all going to yeah. change our name to O'Howard yeah. like the Ramones did. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's the deal. So we, we rose up out of this. Now, I've been going, I met Jerry uh, when we were six years old in the first grade. We went to Catholic school. And then what did he do we're, the first time you met him? He laid down in front of a what? Oh, he laid down in front of an oil truck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I he was just testing his superhero powers. I don't know. <laughs> so how'd you come up with this band name Dogmatics? So that's one of those things when, um, if you do extracurricular reading when you're a little kid, 
and you start reading things and you see a word that you think you know the meaning of, so you kind of skip over it. Then it comes back at you and you say, you know, I don't know what that is. I'm going to look it up in the dictionary. And that's what I did. I looked it up in the dictionary and, I, you know, I said that would be a great name for a band. It means to... Uh, <clears throat> To state your opinions in an authoritative, arrogant manner, as in religion and et cetera, you know. Not in songs. Oh, yeah, songs. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, I'll, I'll let you answer that. Listen to their lyrics, yeah. yeah. When did the band, or when did this band start? The band was established, I would say, in 1981. And so, that yeah, 1981, um, and we were living all together in a loft in Boston on this uh, street called Thayer Street. Uh, we had a 3,000-square-foot loft that was, when we moved in, it was empty. We built walls, our own bedrooms. It was, a, it was in an economically depressed area, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, the it was. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was kind of a bad section of town. Nowadays, it's not so much, but um, it's, very <laughs> it's very opposite. Yeah, it's changed. Everything's like that now. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I call it uh, the drug dealers live upstairs, the users live downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, 1980 when we started, and, you know, just like anything, we were kind of, we didn't know what we were doing, we've never played in a band before, and we kind of, you know, just said, okay, we got to write some songs and, and, and get shows, and that's what we did, and uh, we used to have a lot of shows at our loft because we couldn't get shows because clubs wanted established bands, and by doing that, by having shows at your own place and letting people in for free to see you, you know, you, you started getting uh, a little bit of attention. And uh, that's how we started, basically. Interesting with the having to be established first, kind of difficult to get established before you're established. Right, exactly. Right? Too. It's yeah. kind of like having a, a resume when you're actually trying to get a job, right? You have to have experience so you won't get the job. You don't get you yeah, know. the work experience yeah. before the work. It's great. So that explains this song called Thayer Street that I've got written down over here, I believe. So let's take a listen to that song. It's called Thayer Street. Yes. What is that song about, actually? It's about the uh, the place that we lived uh, um, in the loft and what happened there and, uh, you know, just what it was like living there. We lived there for six years, and um, some of us lived there for six years. But, um, yes, it's basically about that. You hear the lyrics. It describes what the, uh, the loft was like. Um, how the neighbors were. Um, I don't know. What else would you say, Pete? Yeah, it's kind of like the the tenor of the times there. What it was like to be there. Did the documentary capture all this too? I think oh, yeah. it did a great job of doing yeah. everything. No, of course it did. no, but the, there's a, um, one of our most popular videos. The uh, Thayer Street video was created back in 1985 or 84. Yeah, probably 85. And, um, yeah, that that's a very popular song. Actually, it was grabbed by a, uh, the melody was grabbed by a German soccer, soccer team. team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we've yeah. seen videos of it, like the whole stadium rocking as the yeah. people jump up and down to the theme of Thayer Street, but it's sung in German. Yes. I uh, I approve of their version. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's for Die Schalke, the soccer team. Yep. But Rudy's film cap captured that place so well, you can smell it through the screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like so let's take a listen to that yeah, song. It's yeah. called Thayer Street. I believe this is the English version, though. That is correct, yeah. So we'll take a listen to that. It's by the Dogmatics. You're listening to the Punk Rock Demonstration, and we'll be back.
that was the dogmatics with automatic Kalashnikov, I believe. That's how you pronounce it. My pronunciation is terrible sometimes. But uh, it's by the band The Dogmatics. We're here with The Dogmatics in Los Angeles at the LA Punk Film Festival, the seventh annual Punk Film Festival. What is that song about? Uh, that song's a, a, a two minute or less uh, history of the AK 47 rifle, you know, with a little liberty thrown in, my own thoughts. So in the in days gone by, people used to settle the differences with, uh, they probably started with rocks, right? And then they started with sticks, and maybe they threw dirt in each other's eyes. Who knows what the hell they did, right? So this has been going on a long time. Now they've invented, like, firearms, gunpowder, all that shit. So here we are now, in every single country all over the world, th those things are everywhere, and those are what people solve their problems with. And I don't know if you want to call that progress. Eh, I don't call that progress. Yep. Very modern topic. Yeah, so. yeah it is, and I'll, you know, it, it, give it a listen, and you can decide. When did you write that song? Uh, so I'm a uh, in the car on the way over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, have, we yeah. have another member of our band who used yeah. to play with us, who doesn't anymore, but he's gracing us with his presence tonight yeah. and tomorrow night. Oh, thank yeah. you, Tom. So what is your name, and what did you do in the Dogmatics? My Sorry. name's JG. I played keyboards with them for a couple years. Uh, Toward the end of their existence, but it was yeah. some of the some of the best uh, best times that I, I well the ones that I can remember. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I live out here in L.A. now, and so this is I haven't hit the stage with them since 1986, and I'm looking forward to uh, killing it tonight. Yeah. And watching the movie, which I haven't seen, which I may be hiding for a few <laughs> scenes. <laughs> but, uh, well, oh, you featured uh, prominently yeah. in that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. So does the band still have a keyboard player after your departure? No, no. one could follow me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well, actually, um, w very recently we added a, uh, I got had a side project going where I played more or less like folky Irish music. And uh, this is how we came into our friend Jay here. So he's a mandolin player, and uh, it was a natural crossover. So why don't you uh, address the question to Jay yeah. about his oh, yeah. filling yeah. in for the not keyboard yeah. player? Not exactly yeah. a keyboard. I'm. I think yeah. I'm Talk playing. I think I'm playing saxophone lines on a mandolin. That's <laughs> on it distortion. Works. It's yeah. weird, but yeah, I think it, you know, uh, right. for for a few things where it makes sense. But you know, also having a lot of fun uh, doing backup harmony singing with either yeah, Peter he's or, killing the or Jerry. Song. And these guys were kind enough to let me record a song that I brought to the table. And, and yep. Uh, what song would that be? Uh, Think Twice. So Magic. it's a yeah. little bit different from what maybe folks would expect from them, but you know, it's. Uh, it's actually what he did when he uh, joined the band. He thought twice about it. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is. That's a great song. Though. I really, I've been enjoying listening yeah. to that. Yeah, I've listened to it, and it sounds com almost completely different from the rest of the stuff I've heard from you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to branch out a little bit, I guess. It has a, a bit Won't of a, a country uh, tinge, but it's still rocking in the same, same, yeah. same genre. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it. Uh, you know, just because I don't think we're. You know, uh, here we are at a, the L.A. Punk Rock Film Festival, yet we're not a punk band. For some reason, we do get lumped into that but we character. we are at the same but time. But we are. We're, we're uh, you know. It's that country sounding song that mixes with the rest. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to that, like the whole, the genre now, which is called, what, garage punk, sort of? So it kind of wasn't a genre back then, but. So we we kind of were... We invented it, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a little uh, bit of a claim, but no, we just, you know, we're just you part of a it? sort of a... It's an evolution of the original. Yeah. yeah. You know, we sort of got spun off in that direction. Right. Part of that crossover, too, is just like these guys have so remained ingrained in the whole Boston music community with a lot of the peers and younger bands anyway. So even before the Dogmatics decided to record stuff in 2019... You know, they were playing in shows, uh, playing with the other bands. We were playing weird music on the side. Sometimes parts of our band would go join in with the Dogmatics or vice versa. They, you yeah. know, somebody, I think at different times we might have had the whole band just in a pub playing like random Clash, Johnny Cash, and, you know, other weird country songs Clancy or something. Brothers <laughs> Clancy <covers>. Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was the name of that band? That was Peter Halloran and the Hired Men. We start off as a hired hands, and then we found out it was already taken. Yeah. So, <laughs> but there's a great, but there's a great poem by Robert Frost called "The Death of the Hired Man," 
and it's uh, it's worth checking out actually, and it's a good name actually. <laughs> that was our pivot. Interesting. You just mentioned the the guy from the Pogues, Shane McGowan, just recently yeah, passed away unfortunately, yeah, and yeah. just thought of that and just a uh, very I, sad. I mentioned because we'd we'd pay, we'd play a lot of that too, and I mean, and I think that falls into a category of punk as well. So. Yes. Yes, it's interesting how that falls into punk though. Right. Just like the dogmatics. <laughs> well, anyways, we, we talked about this song called Think Twice, which is an interesting twist to uh, all of the stuff that you have released. H actually, how many songs have you guys released? 30, maybe more. So about a song a year or so? Yeah, you, all you would have to do is look at that, uh, the, yeah, so the, uh, the CD uh, with 81, which has, you, yeah. Go to your digital streaming platform of choice <laughs> and count and listen to them. Put your speaker on mute and just let it play for like seven years and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we talked about this song called Think Twice by the Dogmatic. So let's take a listen to that one. It's got a little uh, interesting country twist to it. You're listening to the Punk Rock Demonstration. We're out here with the Dogmatics in Los Angeles at this punk film festival. Welcome back. That was Public Service by the Dogmatics. You're listening to the Punk Rock Demonstration. I'm Jack, and we're out here with the Dogmatics at the 7th Annual Punk Film Festival here in Los Angeles. So we haven't talked much about the film. It's called a documentary of the Dogmatics, or what exactly is the title of the film? Yeah, uh, it's uh, the Dogmatics 
a documentary. And, uh, yeah, we just went with that because um, it was um, just our twist on what a documentary should be. How did you get involved with that? How did you meet the band? And when did you start doing this? I talked to uh, my friend Mahler, and he says that uh, at an early age, we were throwing rocks at the O'Hallorans. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, his, his buddy hit me in the head with a rock, and I like... I only saw karate on TV, so I ran down and gave him like a karate kick in the chest, and then we became friends. After yeah, that, so. no, that's the whole thing. We were we were just young kids together, and uh, and then after throwing rocks, I figured out how to smoke cigarettes and chase girls around. So we we you know did all that stuff as young kids, and then years later they became the Dogmatics, and I uh, was had moved away to uh, Maryland and and. Uh, but I was still friends with them, and I'd go see them, and, and we had a good time partying together. So uh, I ended up filming them in 1985 when they were on tour, and they came to Washington, D.C. to play at the 930 Club. And, uh, yeah, so then they, the whole band ended up staying at my house afterwards. I think the next morning we had to wake up Tommy Long on the front lawn because he was passed out. <laughs> Does that appear in the film, too? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the story still resonates, yeah. but the uh, video is uh, no longer exists. So, no, we do have the film from the uh, footage from the 930 Club, um, and then uh, you know I held on to that for decades, and then finally, uh, well, it was a tragedy that that uh, you know Paul, the original original member of the band, um, he he passed away. He got killed on a motorcycle accident in 1986, and. Um, that kind of uh, the band really didn't play together and record anymore uh, that often. They did. They did play uh, every now and then. There was a charity or a um, benefit, and and these guys would get together and, and help raise money. Uh, but th as far as you know, keeping the Dog Max alive uh, and going, it, it didn't happen till like 2019 when they decided to start recording again. So that's that's when I jumped into. When we first started in, in April of 19, I uh, grabbed uh, the O'Halloran's uh, niece, Jada. She had been archiving all the history of the band, where they played, what they recorded, uh, flyers. She had ticket stubs. She, had, she did a real good job of archiving things, and I worked with her to... Uh, uh, organize a uh, documentary, which really turned out well. It's been very successful. We won several awards. And, and so, like, it was fun because there was a time bef uh, when we were playing shows to support the EP that the band had done in 2019, where Rudy and Jada made up little business cards yeah. saying, you know, we're working on a documentary, and like they were handing them out to anybody because a lot of folks in the scene, you know, will show up. For if the dogmatics play basically anywhere in Massachusetts, <laughs> well, a very great loyal, uh, you know, uh, audience there in the base, um, and so I think I think I think you actually got some good material out of just doing taking that approach. Anyone who had anything and, to know, say at all yeah, was yeah. listened to. So, you know, <laughs> it's a creative way to get a creative way to get some information out of the community to you know support what Rudy and Jada and Maxwell had already you know tracked down. You find out things about the band that you didn't know before from all these uh, third-party places. Oh, yeah, well, I was—I can remember going through a ticket line at the Somerville Theater and showing everyone the the business card, and some people recognize the Dogmatics name from the old days, and they, oh yeah, I remember, I'm, I got I got a flyer, or I've got some pictures, or whatever, and then. Then we get to the next person and they don't know who it is. And then you get to the next person. Oh, I used to date Jerry. <laughs> it was a lot of fun uh, doing the research. <laughs> just speaking for myself, the, the film is very good. And uh, it just seems to me that the overarching theme is even when the worst thing in your world <laughs> happens to you, you can still move forward. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. that. Yeah, I never looked at it that yeah. perspective. But yeah, it was a very tough film to make because, you know, losing Paul. O'Halloran uh, and trying to uh, bring that forth to an audience because it has to be told and you know all the emotions that's involved with it especially to the people that knew him and then try to get back out of that and, and make the film uh, continue to be uplifting uh, on the theme that you're talking about it, it just it was very difficult uh, film to edit and it, we somehow we pulled it off and I I, I always attribute it to uh, your brother's Paul's uh, humor is what we use to get us both in and out of uh, the the section where we have to explain his death that's true too and uh, lots of times you could say like we got here and we're still doing it and having a lot of fun doing it because of 
you know, we persevered, and it's perseverance. So uh, I, I like to think about it in these terms. There's a great writer called Ambrose Beers, and he had this thing called a Devil's Dictionary from the 1890s. So perseverance, he defines as it's a minor virtue through which mediocrity achieves an inglorious success. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you. I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let that sink in for a second. <laughs> but you do get the better quality once uh, you have even more passion on something that you've started with. So I think that yeah. might have contributed to the dogmatics being better. Yeah, for sure. You know, the more you do, if you do something you like, like some people can think of it as being like a loser who keeps doing the same thing they did when they were younger or, you know, <clears throat> people who just keep the faith are enjoying what they're doing, so why are you going to change? So with that, let's take a listen to another song by the Dogmatics. Let's take a listen to a newer one. We've been playing some new and old ones. Uh, I believe Drop That Needle just came out in 2019 or 2020, around there somewhere. And also, that's the name of the album, I believe. Jerry's over there. He's probably the best one who can address that. Hey, Jerry! I knew there's a reason why I brought up that song, so we can get him back in this interview. We're talking about this... <laughs> We're talking about this song called Drop This Needle and this album, Drop This Needle. How did you guys come up with that? So, yeah, um, I actually, that's in, we have a loft where I live, uh, where we rehearse um, pretty much on every Sunday. Well, not every Sunday, but every other Sunday. And, um, like, again, this is a garage sort of uh, a song, and we were just screwing around with it. Drop the needle means, you know, when you were younger and you, oh, would, buy, yeah. when you would buy a record, right? And if you listen, you listen to a song and you liked it so much, you keep playing it again and again and again. And that's, that's what it is. And so it talks about songs and bands that we, that we love. And, um, and Drop the Needle is basically listening to those bands and kind of showing our appreciation of that type of music. So let's take a listen to that song. It's called Drop That Needle off of Drop That Needle by The Dogmatics. You're listening to the punk rock demonstration out here in Los Angeles at the LA Punk Film Festival.
That was Rockabilly Ramble by the Dogmatics. Right here with the Dogmatics. I'm Jack, and we're out here in Los Angeles at the LA Punk Film Festival. And it sounds like uh, you've got something to say about that yeah. song. <laughs> so I forgot all about that number, but which I was just learning how to play, trying to learn how to play the guitar. And uh, I love reverb and stuff, so it was cool. <laughs> and Rockabilly has a lot of that stuff, so yeah, I really dig that stuff. I started playing, and I just love listening to Eddie Cochran and Buddy Holly and all those guys. I just really deeply influence. I think that's the root of a lot of it. And that's also what makes the Dogmatics unique with all these different genres melded together, like rockabilly, and then some yeah. punk rock hands, some rock, some country, every, just a little bit of everything. Right. Makes it sound like rock and roll and good stuff. So where can people find more information about the Dogmatics? Uh, you can go to thedogmatics.com. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it's pretty, uh, pretty much all the social media handles are, you know, at the Dogmatics, um, Facebook, Instagram, whatever that music. must thing is. TikTok. Or tick, no, TikTok. We haven't gone over to the TikTok side yet, so you might pull us kicking and screaming in there. We'll see. Where do they listen to um, music at? So yeah, and, and you know, from the website, you can link over to you know all the new, all the back catalog and new stuff is all out digital on all the popular streaming services, all the usual suspects there, and then you know, you know, so and then that's the newest the stuff from two nine. 2019 forward um, is thanks in partnership to a uh, local uh, label um, called Rumbar Records, uh, by, run by Malibu yep. Lou out Malibu in Boston. Lou. So yep. thanks, Lou. And um, and then uh, we've been, you know, this is what like one of 13 uh, festivals so far that the film had gotten into since it was submitted uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, there, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there might be a few more outstanding that could still yeah, we'll line up, but you know, maybe Rudy can talk about what the plans are going into next year about the documentary being available outside the film uh, festival circuit. That's a good idea. Where can people find more information about this film? We've got. Um, we're working with a distributor, and we're going to have the film out by April. Is what we're looking at, and it'll be on some streaming medias. And of course, the dogmatics.com would be the place that you would find uh, the link to where it can be seen because a lot of people have been really wanting to see it, and we're, we've, we're expecting a really good turnout today of uh, California people that have, that have some flying down from San Francisco to see the film. Yep, um, we have seen yeah. Some here yeah, we've got. We're going to have a large contingent here, so we're really happy about it, and we're we're happy to get it out in distribution, and that's the key to it all. Yeah. You mentioned April. April, what year? Uh, 2024. Yeah. Just should. in case people are listening, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we base we base. What year is this? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Well, I was just going to say that um, it. Um, we've run the film festival circuit for a year. So we came out in April. We did a uh, our uh, premiere in Boston at the uh, Brattle Theater in Cambridge. Ha Harvard Square, Cambridge, Cambridge, Cambridge Mass, Cambridge, technically. Cambridge, Cambridge Mass, but uh, yeah, and on the website, you, what you it's a great place to you know, we'll post as soon as it's available in, in whatever other ways. But you can see a, a trailer of it up there as well as read some of the reviews and things like that that it's been getting, which is nice. Very cool. Anything unexpected that we should expect in the film? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, we got we got through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we found some great footage um, that uh, Barry Hall had shot, uh, some film. It was actually had sound on it, and that was from like 1981, and that was incredible to find that and see that. And people had not seen that since it was uh, ever. And then there's also uh, the stuff that was recorded in the loft by Blowfish. Yeah, right. And then there was some really great stuff of the motorcycle jousting and stuff. They were doing kind of like this spoof on, um, you know that stupid show that used to be on called uh, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous? So his idea was Lifestyles of the Poor and Unknown. <laughs> and uh, that's what that is. And if you see the film, that's who you'll, we are. Yeah, you'll, you'll <laughs> see that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so with that, we'll take a listen to this last song. It's called Xmas Time. It sure doesn't feel like it since it is almost that time. Yeah. So you've been listening to the Punk Rock Demonstration out here at the LA Punk Film Festival, the seventh annual one in Los Angeles. I'm Jack. My website is punkrockdemo.com. What's the Dogmatics website? Thedogmatics.com. And how about for the documentary? Yeah, it's the same. It's linked onto the, uh, it's a uh, menu page. You'll find the 
film and the band information yeah. on the same website, the dogmatics.com yeah. that was. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you for the interview. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. Jack. Okay. We'll take a listen yeah. to this one last song, yeah. Xmas Time. It sure doesn't feel like it. So years back, uh, we were doing this, somebody was doing a compilation of uh, Boston bands and other bands doing Christmas songs, so we submitted our approval. And this one was written by my twin brother, Paul, who passed away in 1986. So it kind of has a special spot for us, and it, uh, it really is a good Christmas song because every year, season, if you are unfortunate enough to have to listen to seasonal stupid Christmas songs like on the radio, <laughs> fucking it's terrible, you know. But this song is kind of, it kind of does capture, like, it's kind of a shitty and dour feeling. And uh, it says a lot, really. And, it's, yeah. Yeah. and in terms of its, like, place in Boston, like, rock, uh, history. I mean, it went on. Lots of bands cover it, and it's been recorded by the uh, oh, yeah. the Bostones, who the JG's Mighty played Bostones. with. Mighty Mighty Joel Bostones. Yeah. It, it's um, Letters to Cleo. Oh. Yeah. Letters okay. to Cleo. Um, that that was that was just in like what 2019 or something. So yeah, yeah. It's so it's uh, kind of it's it's been added to the list of perennial uh, favorites, if you yeah, want to so call really it. That. Yeah. The, you know, vibe of Boston. Yeah. yeah, it's got a good Boston, dad Boston vibe to it. Such a thing. 